Hi guys, welcome to the show. I'm Lisa Agberry. You're here, doctor. I missed you guys so much. Sorry, had some technical difficulties. Let's get right to the first question. Hi there, I wanted to ask a question. Okay, go right ahead. If I just wanted you to take an x-ray of my hair, examples, split ends, damage here, uh, like a before and after picture, how much will it would you charge? Well, you can go on my website at lisaackbeard.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, click on hair analysis, and then you'll see a uh, strand reading form. Just fill that out, send in your strand samples. I can do a digital image of your strands, not an x-ray, not necessary, a digital image of your strands, microscopic image, and then I will look for damage. I'll use a 50 and a 200X, and then I'll send you all of my recommendations. I'll send you the pictures, the images, as well as what I found, my findings. So do that, and you'll be fine. Okay, next question. Um, hello. Other than our hair texture, porosity, elasticity, and density, are there any other characteristics that make up hair? Absolutely, there are things that we look at and we think about when we think about hair. We definitely think about the color, um, color pigments. You want to look at that and what causes those pigments to be different. One is genetically linked. The other is overexposure, where the cortical fibers, fibers become exposed, and then your hair can start to lighten, like in, in sunlight or in situations where you use a permanent wave or a chemical relaxer. It can lighten your hair, damaging your cuticle through harsh brushing. You'll begin to expose your cortex. You can lighten your hair. So that's one thing you want to think about with the characteristics, the color. Also the texture and type, the way your hair is shaped. Those are things you want to think about. If your hair is extremely curly, medium, a slightly or extreme, you want to know that because that does make a difference in how you manage your hair. Texture makes a major difference. That's the size of your strand. So you want to make sure that you know the size of your strand so you know how to manage a hair strand that's very small or a strand that's large or medium. So those are some of the things. Hopefully, hopefully I've kind of answered your question. Uh, next question. This is about an individual who mother has psoriasis. And she also has a question about hair dye. And she said, what can I do to combat her hair her scalp psoriasis without medication. Well, there are things that you can do naturally, but you also want to make sure that if you've got a diagnosis from your dermatologist, you want to try to follow those steps and then speak with them about alternative things that you can do. But I will give you some things that I will have recommended to patients when they're not necessarily in the disease state, but when they've had flare-ups of psoriasis and they're no longer having that flare-up, but they want to prevent a new flare-up. What I found is if you can keep the skin in a clean, acidic, stimulated, and hydrated environment, the skin will do very, very well. And you will find that you'll have less flare-ups because you don't, um, you actually assist in helping the renewing process or keeping the skin stable. So it really, really works well. Clean, shampooing often, shampooing on an as needed basis instead of every two weeks or once a week. You know that you have scalp problems, you wanna remove those pollutants without scratching or scrubbing the scalp. So just simply shampooing every two to three days will solve that. Acidic, make sure your shampoos are mildly acidic. 4.5 to 5.5, oopsie, which is the pH of your hair and scalp. Okay, I did that. I got that gone. And so you want to make sure you stay with a acid balanced shampoo. And then you want to make sure that you have a stimulated environment. Scalp, skin, um, their organs. All organs need good blood supply, good circulation. So you want to do nice deep tissue massage. That's really, really important. And then you want to keep your environment. Um, hydrated. You, you want to make sure that you don't over dry the hair in the dryer. Do things that could cause the hair to really dry out. Uh, things like that. That's really sun. Making sure you pay attention to those kinds of things. Things that dehydrate. Stay away from those. And that'll keep your environment the way it should so you can possibly work with this hair and not, excuse me, work with your hair but not dry out your scalp. And that's so crucial. Hair dyeing. I don't recommend dyeing. Tinting, and that's probably what you meant, hair tint is a permanent color. And the question about that is, uh, she's having some gray, and she wanted to 
color her hair black and she wanted to know if it's more harmful harmful to do dyes on a or tinting on black it, tinting it black or is it more harmful to tint it lighter well let's talk about that a minute if you put color on the hair and the hair is white because gray is just the illusion because your hair is really just white losing its pigment and is now turning into that you have the gray because of the dark and light strands well if you are putting color and getting the hair darker on that white strand which is by the way great because you can you can have so much fun with white hair you can do things like make it look like it's highlighted because it's just like a clean canvas but if you deposit dark pigments you're basically doing that if you put black if you color your hair black or dark brown or natural black you're just depositing dark pigments if you use lighter tones you're just depositing light pigments and you're doing it into the cuticle you're really not going into the cortex so you're not damaging the area where the structural changes can occur so it's pretty safe pretty even you just have to make sure that you hydrate the hair deep condition and you gotta hydrate but you always have to protein when you hydrate you want to protein for strength hydrate for moisture okay let's see next question it says what is the best comb to use daily when detangling is a Denman brush good well I do not recommend a brush to detangle but I do like Denman brushes they're pretty strong they're sturdy they don't tend to have little snags in them they wear very well a little bit more pricey compared to some of the other brushes but they're pretty cool so Denman brushes are fine but I just don't like it for natural hair so ladies if you're out there with natural hair I think that anytime you start brushing natural hair you tend to play a little bit of tug of war so just be careful I mean be very careful I don't see the benefits of it so I don't recommend brushing with natural hair brushing is great for circulation increasing the circulation it's also great for smoothing styles like roller wraps and things like that but when you got natural hair there's too many chances of pulling so I just don't recommend brushes now as it relates to detangling I don't recommend you detangle with a comb I recommend that you use your fingers and thumb go on my website at lisaackberry.com I have a video a tutorial with me detangling my hair so it'll show you exactly what to do a comb is used for grooming you should use it for styling but never to detangle okay let's see next question is we have let's see it says I would like to know what you what product you recommend for transitioning and do you ship to Canada yes I ship to Canada and the products I recommend for transition I have a transitioning pro program because what I found is that women tend to really play it's like a war with that line of difference or line of demarcation where the new growth ends and the chemically treated hair begins so I recommend that you have some help so I put together this program I have transition tutorials I did a show with me because you know I did relax my hair back in 09 some of you may know some of you may not just to see and by the way I hadn't had straight hair for 20 years so wow that was a big deal but I loved it it was a labor of love it's, it's been great I just wanted you guys to see that you don't have to do the big chop in order to transition and you can transition without losing all your hair and so I put together a program after that, and it's on my website, at lisaagbeard.com. You'll be fine. Products, program, all included. Okay, next question. Will you be making samples in the future? Also, is it okay to roll a set in my hair, and is it okay to relax for 10 minutes on new growth only? Well, samples I've made in the past, I will make in the future. At the present time, I'm not making samples. It relates to... Um, what was the next part of the question? Roll a set. Roll a sets are fine. Just make sure that you do not roll a set your hair and sit under the dryer extended amounts of time because what you're going to do is dry out the top of the hair and dry out your scalp. So you want to make sure that you roll a rotate. So two several things. I mentioned roll a rotate, but you also want to make sure before rolling, remove excess water. Make sure you only put the leave-in products on that you need just to lubricate the hair, just to saturate slightly. And then you want to roll a rotate. And how do you roll a rotate? You roll towards you, you rotate opposite. So what you're doing is you're just taking the roller and loosening it up. And then you retighten the clip so you keep a nice form 
but that's fine. And also new growth. Relaxing on new growth is where you want it. And 10 minutes is okay. It'll give you a texturized look. Okay, next question. Um, is it possible to stop and regrow my thinning hair? I have been chemical free for about nine months since the big chop. You didn't have to do the big chop. That's why I did my little study because I don't want you guys to feel like you have to do the big chop. And I think I skipped a question, but I'll come back to it. Okay, and I think the big thing is she's losing hair. She's been to a dermatologist. She's had minoxidil. At from she also she said a dermatologist wasn't help. She's minoxidil, and she went to the hair club for women. She's got a lot of things going on. She's gotten a little better, but she wants to know if she stopped using the minoxidil while her hair come out. Again, yes, you may lose that hair that you regrew with the minoxidil, but you need an examination from a trichologist. Um, I don't know what happened with your dermatologist. I'd like to know more about that because it may be something that she or he asked you to do that was pretty valuable that you just didn't follow. I don't know what you mean when you said no help. So just... I would recommend you call my institute for free counseling. I would love to hear more about that. My number, 901-380-4445. That's the number at the institute. Call, ask for a phone appointment. I'm a busy lady, and I'm sure you guys are too. So if you want to speak to me more, ask for that phone appointment. Okay, next question I almost skipped. It says, my daughter got sunburn on her scalp last summer and she blistered and she had all kinds of problems. She even lost her hair. What she wanted to know, what is what can she do this summer to protect her scalp? Well, two things. Number one, you definitely want to be careful about keeping her in that exposed sun for a period of time because you can destroy that follicle if you get a second degree burn. It is a possibility because you'll be right in the area where the hair is developed in that dermapilla area. The second thing is yes, you use sunblock. Cover her, sunblock and cover her head and make sure that she's protection. Sunblock is okay to use on the scalp. I highly recommend it. Okay, next question. According to my stylist, my hair is condition damaged. Hmm, um, from too much co-washing and leaving in too much conditioner, etc. I have excessive knots, splits, breakage, and shedding. What can I do to remove this damage? She said it, it she said to use a sulfate-free shampoo and stop the leave-ins and deep conditioners. I just don't and she's cutting off her knots and and, and splits and every time she shampoos. Well you're really gonna cut away your hair. Because every time you cut away those little knots, you're taking your length. And I've talked about that a lot. But one of the things that you have to remember, too, is it's not the conditioning that's causing the problem. It's the lack of cleaning before the conditioning. One of the problems. You first don't, don't co-wash. That's right, guys. I said it. Do not co-wash. I don't care if it's only been a day since you've shampooed. If you feel you need to put conditioners in, like deep conditioners, you're going to have to rinse and you're going to have to do a quick fix clarify. That means lots of rinsing, put the clarifier on, leave it in for 60 seconds and rinse it away. If you do that, then you'll get the debris and pollutants from the day. Then put your conditioner on for 60 seconds and you've got something there that's going to be great and they're going to be helpful with your hair. But do not put conditioner on without cleaning. Leaving conditioners are different. The molecules that make up those conditioners are smaller. Deep can, deep conditioners, the molecules are small, but there are, the, excuse me, the molecules that make up the conditioner are small, and they go in deeper into the hair. So you definitely do not want to uh, put on, leave all that outside debris on. I'm hoping I get that <laughs> answer. I don't mean to get it twisted here. But you want, definitely don't want to put that outside debris on your hair and then try to put a deep condition on because it will cause a problem with the penetration. The molecules are larger with the leave-in conditioner. They sit on top, they rest around the cuticle. The deep penetrating conditioners rest around the cuticles, but the molecules are smaller, so they can do a lot of repair work. If there's a lot of debris there, they cannot do the repair work. So I fixed that answer. <laughs> okay, so definitely leave-in conditioners sulfide free shampoos you want to stay with shampoos that are um, more acidic so in react because the hair is that way in reaction you want to make sure that you're using 4.5 to 5.5 shampoos clarifiers milder cleansing agents you're going to find that uh, 
I don't feel like there's a major problem. I haven't seen this under the microscope with the hair, and I've used both. But the biggest thing that I've noticed is if you use a higher pH, then your, your hair's cuticles tend, tend to lift. Um, if you use a lower pH, more acidic, not too low, 4.5 to 5.5, you have a more compact cuticle layer. But thanks a lot, guys, for these questions. I'm Lisa Sankvira, your hair doctor, and I'll see you next time right here on the session of Ask the Hair Doctor.